What's up guys? Talton Robertson back at it again and today I'm going to be showing you how to use my favorite repricer, New Price. So let's dive into it. All right guys, we're logged into my computer and so I'm already here on New Price. So one of the first things I want to tell you about new price is that when you log in and you, let's say you've logged in once or twice, uh, your active inventory actually does not change automatically. This is one of the only downsides that I've really found about new price. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you first log in is go ahead and click this refresh inventory button. Hands down, you're going to want to do this every time if your inventory changes, which like any Amazon seller, it should be changing every single day, either because you're making sales or you're uploading new inventory to your Amazon account. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and click this refresh inventory button. And this process typically takes a while, uh, maybe 30 seconds to a minute. So I'm going to let this refresh and then we'll jump right back into it. All right. Now that it has finished refreshing, uh, you can see that my active inventory is actually 1663 and not the 14, whatever it was. All right. So new price. Let's go ahead and show you some of the features here. Uh, we'll start with this history feature. So on your history feature, you can actually see where different items got repriced and what day. And uh, if you click on any of these, let's say this one got repriced four hours ago, you can see how some of these prices got changed from 19 to 17, 57 to 89, 22 to 17, so on and so forth. So you can hire a virtual assistant to do your repricing for you. Uh, and that way you can actually hold them accountable and actually see what they did at a glance. Um, let's also look in the user settings. Now here you have what you call your triggers and you can manage your triggers. So we're going to click on that. And I just have the default triggers. I do not use the triggers for repricing in my business. However, you can definitely do this and make it work and reprice your inventory a lot faster. Although it's not going to be quite as accurate as having a person physically look at the listing and compare all the numbers you know, using some type of uh, like template, for example. Uh, I have a template for my virtual assistant to go by and, you know, essentially they will price it at the buy box or a little bit above the buy box. Most of the time, I'm not going to go into like the entire template or anything, but for my business model, most of the time I am pricing at the used buy box. But we can go in here into the edit and you can see all of your different trigger sets. And so we have trigger sets like one through eight here. And uh, you have your e-scores, which if you don't know what an e-score is, it's a number of days that this item has sold. So if it has sold between 115 and 999 days within a six month period, it will be in this trigger set. And then you'll also have your sales rank. Uh, you can compare it to an FBA slot or a U slot, or you can compare it to the buy box. And we can even set a target profit. That way you're not repricing below your target profit. And so you can go ahead and go through all of these and set it up how you want it to be. If you want to do it based on the same settings as say your scouting app, whether you use Scoutly or Scout IQ. Uh, they're one in the same, essentially they do the same exact job. So if you want to scout and reprice in the same manner, you could. And that's one reason I really do like new price, but I really like new price is just because when I do my repricing, let's say I want to just go to page two. Let me just scroll down to page two. Cause I, I repriced some earlier on page one. Let's see, page two. All right. 
And then so here's some page two. And then so let's just go through a couple different examples and how we can reprice these different items. So your current price is what you currently have it have the item listed for. Now you have a new buy box here, a used buy box here. These are your MF offers, and then these are your FBA offers. So that's kind of what we're going to be paying attention to. Fulfillment method also matters. Uh, your e-score matters. And I don't really look at rank too much. I'm more concerned with the e-score than the rank. But these are all factors that you can use when repricing your inventory. So Spirit Bear, uh, I have it priced at fifteen thirteen. That's the used buy box price, so I don't want to change that. Same thing here, used buy box price. I don't want to change it. Same thing here. Let's see. Eventually, I'll find one. And so this one actually doesn't have a used buy box, but I am the lowest FBA, so that's also where I want to be at. Um. Okay. Here's a good example. So I've got. Totally blonde DVD priced at seventeen nineteen, but the used buy box is roughly fifteen ninety nine. Now, usually when it says UA, this just means unavailable. The data is unavailable. It cannot give us an exact number on the data. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this. It's going to open up a new tab, and then we can see the DVD here and who's selling it. And so I'm going to filter this for prime results. And you can see that this is the only prom offer at seventeen nineteen, so I'm probably just going to keep it there because it's the only I'm the only prom offer. Um, now let's go do some more. So here, no use buy box, but I am the lowest FBA. I don't want to change that. This one, the F. This is twenty one seventy five. That's the used buy box, and I'm priced at twenty two thirty two. Now, because this is such a small difference, it's only uh, not even a dollar difference. I'm going to match the used buy box because I will be more likely to get the sale at the used buy box. And here's a fun fact for you guys: eighty three percent of sales happen at the buy box. So when you're selling. If you're an FBA seller, you definitely want to get that used buy box as much as possible. And even if you're an MF seller, you can still get the, the buy box, uh, but it, you're a lot less likely to get it being a merchant fulfilled seller. All right, let's keep going. Um, we're, we're matched there, so I'm not going to change that. Match there, not going to touch it. Not going to touch it right here okay so i'm currently actually priced above the new price so i'm just going to go ahead and match the used buy box price that makes the most sense to me we're matched here match there all right here's another one we're off by pennies i'm just going to match the used buy box and so you can see a lot of this is kind of repetitive i'm matching the used buy box a lot now here's one uh that's you know more more than a two dollar difference not by much but i'll probably click on the listing and just see how many used offers there are are selling at prom and then you can see here we have the lowest used offer that's at 1168 then 1169 1199 and then it goes up to the 13. so to me, it almost makes sense to just price down to the, the 11 and go ahead and try to get that sale because it seems like the price of this item is going down compared to where I priced it originally. Now, I will just click the use buy box. It makes sense for me. Now see this one, this one's wild because we're priced at 25.89. And the used buy box is at $9.94. So let's click into this one and just see what's going on here. Again, I'm just going to filter for prom. And we can see one, two, 
And then this is the third offer right here at $20. So $20 would probably be where I price it at, uh, considering that this item sells 16 times in six months. So it's not a, a super fast seller, but I could hope to get this $20 price. So that's where I'm going to price it at. Uh, I will probably reprice it again and get less than the $20 more than likely, but you know, uh, we're just going to let that ride. Here's one where I'm actually priced right where I want to be at. Um, it's not, it's not the lowest price and there's a big gap there. So anytime there's a gap, I really want to price at the high side of the gap if possible, especially when the new price is like more than double. Of whatever the used buy box is because i know that there's more room to squeeze there uh here's another good one where i probably will not reprice i'm you know uh right here at the 138.98 on the second used offer but it's a pretty slow seller so i'll probably let this 85 dollars sale happen and then i'll probably catch the next sale at 138. Keys to planting light shadows. I'm priced at $15.02, but we can see that the buy box is $11.41, and there's more than three offers at least at uh, $11.41, so I will also be priced at $11.41. Mm. Now this one, I've got the used buy box. Right here, I'm off by a penny, so I'm just going to match to just try to get that next sale. Right here, I've got the used buy box. We're going to keep that. Right here, I do not, and it's only off by a couple cents, so we're going to match the used buy box. I'm off by a penny there. Going to match it. Um... Right here, I'm off by like a dollar, so I'm just going to go ahead and match it. And the reason why I'm matching the used buy box is, again, because most of your sales are going to happen at the buy box. Now, here's an interesting one here. The buy box is 824 Now, this is a perfect example of why you don't always match the buy box. This buy box right here is a merchant-fulfilled offer. These bottom three offers are merchant fulfilled and they actually have the buy box now my price may be a little high but you can kind of tell that there's not really a whole lot of offers here so i can price it higher and it may take a little longer for this item to sell however i'm just using the laws of supply and demand you know the the supply is low the demand is not super high but it's probably higher than the supply so I can price a little higher. So I'm actually not going to change that at all. Here we're good. Now here I'm gonna match the buy box again. It's just off by a few cents. Same thing here, we're off by like a dollar. We're, we got the buy box. Here, I'm off by just $3, but considering the price of it, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and match that. You know, we're going to get that sell at that $121. Um, this one we're good at. Let's see. So here, I would probably just go ahead and match that buy box at the $2074. It's only a $3 difference. It's really no need to wait for that sale. Uh, and, you know, everyone prices differently. You cannot just go about how I'm pricing everything, but you know, I make sales. Everything in my inventory sells pretty quickly for the most part, because we stay on top of the repricing. I want to give you, okay, here's a good example. So the person of interest, now I'm priced six cents lower than the new price, but that's honestly pretty, pretty too close. That's too close. For someone to actually buy mine, I think there needs to be a little bit more of a difference. But you can see here that there's really no prices that I really want to click on. I don't want to go straight from 17 down to 1149. So one of the features is you can click this and you can enter in your own price. So I'm going to come in at 1567. It's not that much of a difference, but 
I'll be way more likely to catch that sale because someone will save $2 by going with my offer and they're going to get that free prime shipping. Now there's no used buy box here, but I am the lowest FBA. Here I'm off by a little bit, so we just want to match the buy box. Uh, I probably just match this low offer because they're so close to my offer. There's no need to wait. $15.99 off by a penny. We'll just match that to get the buy box. And so forth, so on and so forth. So you can see that most of the time I'm just trying to match the buy box, but there are a few exceptions to the rule, like the one I was showing you with the eight dollar item, uh, and I'm priced at fifty three. Uh, my item is probably priced too high to capture the buy box currently. But if those bottom three offers get bought, the price could raise, and now my price seems more uh, reasonable to get the buy box. All right, here we go. I'm at 24 right here. Uh, I'll probably just, I'll look at this one and see. And you can see 1771. That's for a good use copy. And then comes 18 and then 19 and then 24. Now there is a gap right here, but I typically do not like to be more than three offers away. Uh, from the buy box at any given time. So I'm going to just go ahead and match that price. And this is the last one. Let me just move this up. And I'm priced at the buy box. And then so once you've went through uh, your list here, like I did, and let me move that back down. You can see that this is showing 50 items and I have it aged down. You can actually change this. So where, you know, you're looking at the oldest ones first, if you want, or vice versa, the newest ones. But once you get done with all this, you're going to click reprice custom. And then you can actually see all the changes that you've made. And you can see here, you have an adjusted new price. Now over here, you have something called your floor profit. I have mine set at zero because I don't want to lose money on any of my items. However, I am okay with breaking even on it, um, considering that I paid nothing for the item. Uh, now, most of the time, I actually pay a dollar or two, so I'm willing to lose a dollar or two. But it's to get rid of the inventory that I do not want in my inventory. I want to sell it. I want to get rid of it. I'm willing to price it super low. And so when you price something really low, uh, you will have an adjusted new price. And so essentially, if your floor profit is, let's say, $3, it will adjust whatever price you try to price it at to also take into account that you want to make $3. So that's really cool. And I'm just going to hit confirm and boom, we're done. If you guys found this video helpful, go ahead and hit that like button and smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my content. Also, if you guys are interested in getting new price to reprice your inventory, there will be a link in the description below. If you use that link, it'll help my channel out and help support me so I can keep giving you guys great content. Also, if you need any help, please feel free to reach out to me. I have a website where you can actually book a consultation with me, a one-on-one -on -one phone consultation. I have 15 and 30 minute sessions. And you can do that at ToutonRobertson.com. And then you just click on the services tab and you'll find the different services that I offer as far as consultation goes. But that's it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned a lot. And as always, keep hustling.